In this video, I will show you how to update the firmware of your Big Tree Tech SKR Mini version 1.2 motherboard using Visual Studio Code and Platform IO. I promise it's easy. Let's get going. How's it guys? In a previous video, I reviewed the BTT SKR Mini uh, card. You can have a look at the review over here. This is a great little drop-in card that will upgrade your Ender 3 with very little effort at all. I did have an issue, however. Uh, my extruder was a, is a geared extruder. I put the Titan extruder, which you can also look at that video here. And I put that extra, Titan extruder in and there was an issue with it because it was going the wrong direction. So it's not a standard one, it's a geared extruder, so therefore it runs in the opposite direction. So in order to fix this, I had to update the firmware and then flash that into the, into the BIOS and then get a new firmware on the machine. So I'm gonna show you in this episode how to install that firmware. There is a very cool feature on Windows called Windows Sandbox and it's in the latest version of Windows 10. You can enable it in the options and it is very useful for experimentation. But in this instance, I can now install a fresh new version of Visual Studio Code and Platform I.O. and show you exactly how to, to do this and to install it. So I'm going to show you on my machine here how we install Visual Studio Code. We're going to install Platform I.O. which is required for your Arduino and, and IoT devices. And then I will show you how to get the repository from the GitHub and we'll upload it to our uh, Ender 3. So let's do that. Let's get going. The first thing you want to do is you want to open up your browser, whatever browser you're using, and go to code.visualstudio.com. I will post all the links that I use in this video in the description below. So we're just going to click on download for Windows and this will download the latest version of Visual Studio Code. This takes a little while for it to download so you just have to bear with it. And Visual Studio Code is downloaded. So now we're just going to run it and install it like you would install a normal application. Visual Studio Code is now installed and it is very, it's a very stable program for you to work in. It actually is great uh, as an alternative to the Arduino package. And I really enjoy using Visual Studio Code as a developer. And this process is not as daunting, as difficult as you think. So once we've installed that, we're going to go to the extensions manager, which is these square buttons on the side here. And we are going to search for platform IO. Platform IO. And this will install the program, the extension that we need to work with our Arduino board. So we click on install and that'll take a, a few minutes to install. While that is downloading and installing, please consider subscribing to the channel. Give us a like if you like this video and send us a comment on what else you would like to see. It's really useful to get that feedback so I know what videos to bring you and that what you guys want to see. I use a lot of the videos and suggestions I see on my, uh, my user group and I find user groups are really useful. So also consider getting onto some user groups where guys can help you. They are fantastically helpful. You'll see an information screen at the bottom telling you that it's installing platform IO. It takes about two or three minutes to get it completely installed depending on for how fast your internet connection is. So once it finishes installing, we'll reboot the Visual Studio code and we'll get back into the code. While we wait for platform IO to finish downloading, what are the benefits of updating your firmware? Well, you're keeping up to the latest versions of the firmware for your motherboard. And also you can add features such as your BL Touch, which is outside the scope of this video, but is a great feature to add to your printer to enable our auto bed leveling. And in my case, as you can see here, I've installed a new extruder, which is a far better extruder from the base extruder. And I need to update the firmware in order to get that to run in the right direction. It's so simple to update the firmware and there's so many options that you can change and do and you can change your screens to touch screens. There's a lot of things that you can do in the firmware and it's not as daunting and as difficult a task as you think. So we're just waiting for this to finish installing and then we'll carry on. Once it's installed, we'll go down uh, to the GitHub repository and the GitHub repository is really useful. It's a place where it's a public domain where the, uh, the designers of the motherboard or whatever, they will load, upload the latest version of the firmware. 
And in that firmware, you've got fixes and bug fixes and improvements. Okay, you'll see that now it is in finished installing and it says, please restart Visual Studio Code. So we close it down and we reopen it. And now Platform IO is installed. The next thing we'll do is we'll go and get the Git repository. So let's open up our browser again and paste in the link that is in the description below. So I'm going to grab that link and we're going to paste it in here. So let's dump that in there. And this is where we are going to download the GitHub repository. So we just clone and download. Now I want to give you a tip here. Um, Windows 10 in the latest build, they have fixed the 256 uh, character length in the in the number of characters for the for the path, but you have to go into the the registry to upgrade that. So what you want to do is when you save this, make sure you save it into like the base directory. So in your C drive, I will show you now. So I will go here and we'll click on download zip. And when it asks me to save, I will say save as and we'll put it into a folder on the root directory called on the C directory. Okay, and I'm going to create a new folder here called BTT. It's a nice short name so that we don't go too long with these names and we're going to download the Git repository. This will take a minute or two. So there's a lot of downloading to be done here and it's all dependent on the speed of your internet access, but it's worth the wait. Once it finishes downloading, we're going to go on to open. And we will extract everything. I'm going to give this a shorter name just to make sure that we don't go over that 256 characters because there are some long names inside this directory. Once it's finished extracting, we'll now go into Visual Studio Code. We'll go open project and then we'll go to that folder that where we extracted that. So let's go to the firmware. Let's go to firmware. The card that we currently have in the machine is a version 1.2. So we'll open the 1.2. We'll go into the modern folder and you want to get to the directory where it has the platform io.ini file. You then open up that directory and it will appear on the left hand side here. It'll reopen Visual Studio Code and there it is. If you look inside the platform INI file, the platform io.ini file, you will see that the card is selected for the big tree, tree tech. So if you use the Marlin bug fix version, you'll have to come in here and change the card. But for now, this is default settings. We'll use these settings. We're going to go into the Marlin folder and the configuration H. Most of the stuff you do is in configuration H and configuration underscore ADV, which is the advanced.h file. Um, I like to change the author so that I know this is a file that I've edited. So I'm just going to go and change the, the author here to my company. And uh, another thing I like to do is to change what is displayed on the screen. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say BTT Ender 3. This also helps you when you are upgrading to know that your firmware actually flashed to your motherboard. So I'm going to call that BTT uh, Ender 3. And then I'm going to go Control F, which is Control Find. And I'm going to search for Invert Extruder 0 underscore direction. Okay, dir. So I'm going to change this from true to false. And if you read on the, the comments here, it says for a direct extruder, uh, V9 set to true. For a geared extruder, set to false. So mine is a geared extruder, so I'm going to set that to false. That is now the completion of my code. I'm not going to change any more code in this and I am going to build it. If you look at the bottom left hand corner here, there's a tick. That's the build button. So we're just going to click on that build button and we will wait for the uh, firmware to build. If there's any errors in your firmware or in your build process, it will display here, but hopefully this will all work well. So let's just wait for this to download and uh, to con uh, finish building. As you can see by what's happening on the screen at the moment, you will notice that it is busy downloading all the files that it needs. So it's actually quite nice. You don't have to go and individually download those files. The um, Visual Studio Code and Platform IO will go download what is necessary. So you'll need an internet connection all the time for this. And then it will start compiling the code. 
Right, now that it's finished compiling, we now need to upload it to our machine. This is so easy, and this is actually one of the nice features of the new version of Marlin. So what you do is you take out your SD card out of your, out of your printer, you put it into an adapter, because I need an adapter for my computer. You plug it into your computer, And so here's a nice little trick for you. You just go right click on the Marlin folder and you say reveal in folder explorer, file explorer. It'll open up the Windows Explorer in the correct location. We're looking for the .pio folder. So we're gonna go into that folder, right? And then we're gonna go into build. And from there, we're gonna go into the name of the card. And if you look at the bottom here, there's a firmware.bin file. That is the file we're looking for. So we're going to take that file and we are going to copy that to our SD card. So on my SD card, I am going to copy that file. So I copied it and I'm going to paste it in there. Once you've done that, you take it out of the machine. So we're going to take that out of our laptop. I'm going to pop it out of the adapter and I'll turn the printer off. We will put this into the machine. So now we plug the flash drive in and uh, well, the SD card into the machine and we turn it on. You give it a minute and you'll see on the screen while it installs the firmware the screen will remain blank and then it will come up and it will tell you the new name so if you see the name that we typed in in our case we typed in btt ender 3 if that name comes in there you know your firmware is correct you can then go and run your machine as per normal check to make sure that your uh, your extruder is going in the right direction and away you go that is the process it is done it is so simple do not be intimidated by Visual Studio Code and all the code that you see there. You're going to change a very small amount on the machine and that's it on the code. That's, that's it guys, that's the end of that story. So again, as I said earlier, please if you like what you see here, consider subscribing, give us a like and a comment. Stay well, God bless and keep well during this, this lockdown period. We'll see you soon. Cheers.